Hey friends, uh, good evening. It's a uh, Saturday night. Uh, I've uh, been able to sneak away from my family and I wanted to do a trade review of Friday's uh, trade, both for the public and for the uh, members of the room and kind of discuss uh, the price action, uh, what went on and why actually we were able to predict in the day we were looking for a key location down to this 2628. Okay, so uh, before we jump into that, uh, let's just kind of go through the, dis uh, the legal, legal disclaimer really quickly. Um, basically, what this says is uh, that uh, past performance is not indicative of future performance. Uh, this is not a solicitation to um, buy or sell equities, futures, options, or currency. Um, there's large rewards, but there's also large risk. And most important, uh, past performance of any trading system, whether it's mine or anyone else's, uh, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Absolutely consult your registered financial advisor and your risk trading plan before ever investing or trading any financial instrument. And please, 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 the two things as a, as a coach that I run into in trading both, both professionals and, uh, and newbie, uh, traders, uh, in my one-on-one -on -one coaching is over trading. I ask you, I implore you, I beg you, slow down your trading. It is possible to spot high odds trade locations, okay? It is possible to find key inflection areas in the markets, and it is possible to find an edge that you can exploit over and over again. I've helped many traders do it. I do it myself on close to a daily basis, right? And you can you can develop a methodology where you can be I have a high degree of certainty of being able to pull the money out of the market and all you need to be a successful trader is two points a day right two points a day helps build an account it's my entire focus for my uh, coaching clients there's more available if you get better right but two a day two a day I, I cannot stress that enough right so uh, and over trading all you're doing is paying your broker you are not helping yourself out so um, Let's uh, let's jump into Friday. So first of all, uh, a couple things to know about Friday. One of the things I do is when I go through the day, I go through uh, tick by tick, right? So this is the first bar that we started out with on Friday. We get this, uh, we get a backside test of this key area, and I I written down in the notes for the members of the room, right? This has been tested multiple times now. Uh, uh, there's less than a ten point stretch, and it's vulnerable, uh, but a quick snap or tick divergence. Would make this a great, would make this a good long location. And then I pointed out, right? It's been a trap point or a swing low on three times, March 22nd, 24th, and 28th. Why is all that important? Because the market tends to re repeat what it does. We obviously open, we come right down to 2334 to the tick, and we essentially end up with an open drive higher. So this is important. Um, I'm talking more and more in the room about angles of attack, right? When the angle of attack is greater than 45 degrees, right and this is closer to 65 degrees you want to see this trend line get broken okay it's not that it can't reverse without it friends it can right but by stepping in early you have to acknowledge hey I'm an aggressive trader I know I'm stepping in with this things that is sharper than 45 degree angle that there's a potential for even a trend day up in this situation and so what's the clue that I want to look for well first thing when we're in here what we want to look for is uh, if I'm not on the most aggressive edge, right? If you're day trading, you're aggressive, period, right? But if you're not on the most aggressive edge, there's some clues that we're looking for. First one is, do we have the ability to trade and close below a prior five-minute bar? That's our first clue. And we get that right here. Now, now, does that make it an automatic short? No. But it is in a key location, and now we can start looking for clues. And where the biggest clue came from here was we were obviously trend day up, and then the other thing that you want to see is could we hold the 5060 retrace because if we get past this 5060 retrace right here on the day right if we get past it we switch from buyers being in control to sellers being in control and then the i think the most critical piece of information for the whole for the entire day was understanding that Wednesday's low was not important that there was not a high volume node from the uh, volume profile chart and that it was susceptible both on the long side and the short side by not taking a trade here long by not excuse me by not taking a short here by not taking a trade here long saved ourselves an immense an immense amount of stress 
in capital loss. That's a win, guys. When you know, knowing where not to trade is as important as knowing where to trade. Next, when you get into this location, I noted we one tick the high. So we want to ask ourselves a very important question besides what the mark we the, the question that we're asking is what is the market trying to do and how good a job is it doing in accomplishing that now we started off with essentially was what was an open drive higher we blew right through the prior days gap fill right which you'll notice was not was not a trade location right there's no zone there um, but that's signs of kind of being bullish right we've We've opened below the range. We trapped back into the range. We shot to the other end of the range. If you just looked at the market at this point, and you looked at it like this, you kind of go, "Hey, that's kind of, that's pretty bullish, right?" So then, what starts to happen is we slowly take to the left. Well, there's our first clue that we traded below, but uh, this is just a clue, right? Nothing's happened yet. And what I would think here is that, hey, we're probably going to push on up, and I'm not going to bring the tick into this formula. But if you look, we we're starting to push up now. Look how much time has passed. We established this high at 9 a.m. And normally by 9.30, what I would expect is shortly after 9.30, between 9.30 and 10, is that we make an attempt to break what's called the initial balance high, which is at the first hour, right? That would be normal. That's what I would expect. So notice we come up and we tag it. And then we do break it. But we only break it by one tick and immediately reject down. That's not normal. What it usually looks like is um, okay well this occurred on the downside right so see how we get we have our first hour low right here right and then we get to in this case it was an opposite of an IB break it was an IB break low we this occurred on the 12th right we come down we break and we hold below and continue lower right I would have expected based on the strength of the market in the first hour that we got the opposite of this picture but what do we get instead we come up right we trade below the first five minute low we close the first hour we have the first hour high and we come up and we one tick that high right now no big deal there except now look at what's happening over here is that we're making a series of higher lows okay and I would expect somewhere in here that we're going to break this wedge to the upside remember my key target for the day to the upside is to get into this white zone, right? Because buyers are in control above, sellers are below. We started off at 33, 2334, right? So 2344 is a 10 point rotation, but we've been having uh, 10 to 15 point ranges. So this would get me up 15 points on the day. Statistically, it would get me to the extreme edge of what's been the average daily range. And if I could get tick divergence in this location, this would make for a great short. So this is, you'd think everybody was looking at this area. This was uh, an obvious upside trade location. And our failure to get to that area, this one tick here, that told us something was wrong, which, and this is the reason why that was important. Normally, when you get a break of the IB high and a close above the IB high, the first 50, 60 back is a high odds trade. The failure to close above the IB high told us not to take the mid, the trade back to the mid. I can't tell you how important that is. Even if you did not short here or you didn't take the short, right? Knowing not to short here, right? Um, that one tick should have clued you off to that, that there was a problem that, and that we had a potential short on our hands, right? But not shorting here, not going long at the mid, and not taking the long at the at one at uh, Wednesday's low, uh, excuse me, uh, Thursday's low, prior day's low, right? Uh, because it was an inside day, not taking that low. Look, if your stop is let's say just even two points, right? This is two, four, six points worth of of stop that you avoided um, adding in, right? Most retail trader, most retail traders are trading between four and twelve ticks of stop, right? And so. Even if you can't figure out where to get the trade, remember, we're trading into a holiday weekend. People are thinking balance, and we just balance out here, right? So if you're trading aggressively here, th there's two goals that we have as, as a coach to get my clients to. First of all, stop losing money, right? How do you stop losing money? By taking trades in locations that aren't supportive, that don't give you the edge 
in, in essence, don't make you the casino, right? So all of this helps. When we're going through here, right, you see a large increase. It's This is the first two large five-minute bars back-to-back. -back. They're, they're outsized. Everything that's in here, we see that there's an expansion in range, which means that in order to get that, we had to have an expansion in volume, right? There had to be, in order to get that push, you either had the the buyers step away from the market, they pulled their bids, or you had a large input in sellers. What we've done is we've trapped all these people who are confident we were getting to 47, 49. They've all been trapped. As a trader, you had to know to step away from here and not take this 50, 60. And what was the clue? The inability to close above. Just like, again, I'm going to go back to the, the mirror image of this on the, the prior day. When we broke the low, right, when we broke this low to the downside, this told us that we probably, if you look at this trade here, right, when we broke this low, and you go, oh, we broke IB low. So you draw your 50, 60 back, right? So we did the typical thing. We came in the 50 retrace, shook out early shorts right behind the 62, and then we rolled to the downside. Why did we know that this was likely? Because we definitively closed, right? We definitively closed below IB low, okay? Coming over here, we did not definitively close above IB high. We one ticked it and it made the 50, 60 vulnerable. You notice know step away. It's to, in my mind that goes down as a profitable trade because you did not take a loss. Next, the target all along, right? was either 26, 24 or 20, 2018 but it was too big a stretch right when you look at your numbers you're 23 let's call it 35 high right if you take away uh, 20 points that's about as big a stretch as ES can usually uh, garner in a day on extreme days we can garner more but it's hard for it to get more than 20 from high to low without getting a major rotation right so if you look we came in this 34 um, 34 was tested out at the beginning of the, of the day Globex low came in at 2332 and I thought that would provide trade location. The zone definitely provided great support, right? So notice, no zone here, zone here, bounce one, bounce two back towards Globex low, gave a rotation from 32 all the way back up to 35 and eventually 36, right? We were unable to hold back into the primary range. We've broken IB low, right? So remember, when we've broken IB low, the expectation would be even if we bounce back up, we've definitively broken IB low. We would expect, there wasn't enough time, but we would expect a 50-60 back to provide rejection at that point, right? We did not get back to the 50-60 back to find out whether it would provide that rejection. And then the market rolled down. And notice, again, remember, these are published at night. For example, for Mondays, I've already released, here's Monday Zones. I've already, I've already published Monday Zones uh, on Saturday night comes right to 2326 right even in the heat of heavy downside pressure we get a response why that was a key location right our next key location is this 18 to 20 right and then we have the top of an open window not key location followed up by 12 and 09 which i imagine on monday is going to provide good response areas so i want to go back to a couple of things in order to be a good trader number one it's important that you understand what the market is trying to achieve and then it's important that you ask yourself, how good a job is it doing achieving that, right? Number two, if you're not trading with a checklist to go off your checklist, like for example, if we end up with a, what's essentially an open drive higher, the one of those things on your checklist should be, can we trade below and close below the prior five minute bar? Just because we can doesn't mean that it'll stop going up or it'll stop going down, but it's the first clue, right? If it can't, it's either extremely strong or it's extremely weak and I don't want to step in in between. Next, if my degree or my pitch is greater than 45 degrees, particularly when it's uh, 50 or 60 degrees higher than that, I really want to wait till that trend line gets broken. And uh, you can see that that occurred right here around 915. Now, um, remember ES has a different quality than say trading corn or oil in that it its natural nature is to have kind of rubber band, snap back in, snap back out, right? And so um, it's always going to be different. It's always usually on 10, 20, and 30-point rotations 
going to find some kind of counter that that's uh, um, those are guidelines not oh there's 10 points it's going to reverse right so um the the point is we started off with a with a lay of the land we had a good map to start off the day we understood where areas were weak and we didn't want to get involved uh based on reading the price action right we understood where we should get responses based on uh the volume profile chart right and then we put together the rotation size right and then we also look for key things like tick divergence into key locations to help us out with getting counter rotations and then we followed our trade plan step by step so that we pulled out a beautifully uh, profitable day um, and and the reason why i say it's profitable even if you even if you didn't get a short or you didn't get a long and you simply avoided these two areas this key area right here this 37 and this 50 60 back right those are losses that you don't have to make up going down the road and to me and for my long-term survivability right that is more important than anything else is knowing where not to trade where not to pull the trigger right and then having a plan to follow to know what i'm looking for to execute um so that i do know where i have the ability to pull the money back out of the market and i want to i want to show you something through here see when we started ripping down through here see where if you look at each of these bars not counting the dojis the actual solid candlestick bars right notice that this is the first bar right here that is able to successfully since we started down all the way up here at 2344 right and we started rolling down this is the first five minute bar just like over here this is the first five minute bar that closes below this is the first five minute bar that closes above it doesn't mean that we're reversing and going back up it's a sign price action is trading and notice all of a sudden we switch over the next hour to a balanced two-sided market and then we roll down again back down to our key area why we could we broke the IB low and you have to know if you want to be successful in trading the yes you have to know the sequence what what the weighting of that sequence is in other words what's more valuable is the 50 back or the fact that we couldn't break IB high what is that which one is more valuable how can I weight that in my decision making process but once you put that all together making trading decisions becomes much much easier and much, it makes it easier to pull money out of the market on a daily basis right and remember our entire goal even though there's clearly more than two points available my goal is to be go and look and go where do I have my highest odds of grabbing two points out and that's when we get confluence of tick divergence into a key location which is the zones right um, and and the um, and I had the proper read of the price action meaning I'm reading the bars correctly so if you'd like help with that if you'd like to learn uh, what we do in the room and uh, how we're able to pull uh, our two to four points out of the room hopefully on a daily basis right that's the goal but more importantly avoid where we shouldn't be trading uh, you're welcome to come in and visit the room be uh, be my guest five days if you'll email me at trade and perform at gmail.com I'll be more than happy to extend you a five-day trial into the room and I gotta tell you for for a, a live education room where we're teaching uh, where we're teaching discovering price action in real time um, and at a price of $95 a month that's less than two ES points and getting in the evening before your key trade location zones uh, and getting context on the day uh, I'm I, I'm pretty sure I can say this confidently I don't think there's a better deal out there so anyways my name is Simon if you have any questions please email me at trade and perform at gmail.com or send me a message on stock twits or Twitter I hope everyone's having a great weekend if you celebrate Easter enjoy your Easter holiday with your family and I look forward to seeing everyone on Monday where it should be a slow day but Friday was supposed to be a slow day too and we got some fireworks so hoping for the same on Monday European markets are closed on Monday by the way have a great night guys we'll see y'all soon